Okay, so we're going to embark, now obviously I've only done just under 100 slides, so it's going to be just at the moment two weeks or three weeks. And, but I'm going to try and make it last a little longer. See, that's why I'm out here um, talking so that I can take up time and, <laughs> and to make it spin out a little bit longer. Okay, so we're going to be looking at soul sleep because as some, um, some people believe that when you die, you just go to sleep. There are others who believe in annihilation so that when you die, if you're not saved, you're annihilated. So there's no... Uh, and there's no hell, and, and um, so there's no um, stand up and, and be accountable for what um, you have to do. I'll go back here, Shane. No. no, no, you do what you're comfortable with. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay. So, um, we want to examine, because obviously, what does the scripture say? And what do we believe happens um, to us to a person when they die? Now, obviously, we've all gone to funerals, and we've gone to funerals of saved people and unsaved people, and according to what we believe, we say, well, this has happened to that soul, or that's happened to that soul, um, but do we actually really know what's happened to that soul? And how do we know? How do we know that that person lying in the coffin and then lower down in the grave or being burnt, uh, being cremated, uh, what happens to that soul? How do we know what happens to that soul? How do we know that that person isn't just sleeping? Don't we talk about, don't we talk about when we put down our animals, don't we say we've put our animals to sleep? Is that the same for human beings? So when the human being dies, don't we say that we've Okay, we're changing the language because we talk about euthanizing animals today and euthanizing people and all sorts of things. Um, and so, um, uh, actually, I have just to take a step back. I haven't heard back from Chris Hustler to see what the results of Victoria. New, uh, Victoria Pause. was it passed? Okay. So um, that's sad. Anyway. Um, so if you really just, fast, you move to Victoria, just make sure your relationships are okay. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. yeah. So, so they've just voted in euthan euthanasia so that um, if for some reason you don't want to live anymore. Well, what do they call, why do they call it euthanasia? I don't want to go down this track. Why don't they call it assisted suicide? We're always talking about people, about people committing suicide and saying people shouldn't commit suicide. You know, it's, it's worth living and, and things like that. Um, and yet, that they're saying, well, if you think that you can't continue on, then you can um, have committed suicide, you can assisted suicide. Anyway, getting back to this topic. So, <coughs> what does it depend on? How do we know what, is ha what happens uh, to a soul? How do we know? And we know nothing apart from the scriptures, okay? We need to... Uh, go to the scriptures because otherwise it becomes he said, she said, they say, we say, and then how do we know? And so we've got to have a common ground, and that common ground of, obviously is the scriptures. So when we look at when a person dies, is that soul asleep or is that soul annihilated if they don't believe or is that soul somewhere else in heaven, or in hell, or somewhere else in between. You know, are they in purgatory? Is that soul in purgatory? Um, so we need to be able to examine that in the light of Scripture. So I know what we believe. Well, we think we believe that Scriptures teach. But can we say that that's the case? Okay. So we need to examine then that idea. We also need to look at how God created man and what is man in relationship to God. Okay? What is our relationship to God? What is any human being's relationship to God? 
And that relationship between God and man will then determine and also determines what Scripture talks about when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Did he die for, for souls that in the end that they would be annihilated? And when God, uh, when the Bible talks about heaven and hell, uh, what does that actually mean if a soul is annihilated? What does hell mean when a soul is annihilated? Um, and what happens to the soul uh, just sleeping in, in the grave? You know, is it just, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ has come back, I've waked up, you know, um, and things like that. So we need to go and start really at the fundamental and look at God's pinnacle of creation, which is man. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Yourself. And you think of yourself as being unique, don't you? you? You look at the mirror, you look at yourself in the mirror, you think that you are unique, and you are. There's no one else like you. There's no one that is looking back at you in the mirror. And um, the, you are, you feel like you're the only one that is, that feels this way. Okay, whatever, you know, the way you feel and the way you look and, and things like that. So you are a unique creation. When God created Adam and Eve, well, when God created Adam for a start, he put him into the garden. He had a relationship with Adam, a walking and a talking relationship with Adam. He gave Adam a commandment not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he, when Adam disobeyed that commandment, well, Adam and Eve disobeyed that commandment, God punished them and all of creation went with that. And so we see the importance of man as a created being because it or they had a relationship with God. And that was broken when man sinned. Okay? And there's no other way to get that relation back because the wages of sin is death. And um, so and and, that, and that's another whole study in itself, which we might do a little later. So what I want to do, do then is to look at soul sleep, but we'll start off looking at man, okay, and the relationship that man has uh, with God. So um, So, um, here's a, a cartoon taken from a chick track. Uh, he was a good man, but we all, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. So we all know that eventually, if the Lord tarries is coming, we will die. At some point in time. You will be that person, won't you? I mean, no one lives forever. We've all, all known people who've died. Family members, um, just recently, uh, celebrated my mother's first year of her death. Celebrated, I'll put that in quotation marks, because it's not really a celebration, is it? Um, so we all know people who have died. And you're all going to end up in this position. A horizontal position, or maybe cremated, but we don't promote cremation, but that's the way that the world is going today. Um, so there is a, a sense of what happens once you're in the grave. Okay? What happens to the soul? What happens to the soul? So man is created in God's image, right? the pinnacle of creation. Man is created in God's image. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. <clears throat> the 
Okay. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we see two things here. Firstly, that God created man in his likeness. Okay, his likeness. What's the other thing that you see in that verse? What's the other thing that you see in that verse? Firstly, we are created. It says there, quite clearly. It's for a purpose. For a purpose. And what is that purpose? To look after everything. To look after everything. Right. So to look after everything means um, having dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, so we are then not only the pinnacle of creation, but also created in the image of God, as well as given the instruction to look after everything. We're supposed to be environmentalists. We're supposed to be greenies. Okay, we're supposed to be greenies. We're supposed to look after the environment, but not to the extreme. All right? So we, we as Bible Christians are supposed to be greenies, but greenies are supposed to be Bible Christians. Correct. Greenies. Yes, that's true. That's true. Okay, so um, the, of course the, the um, environmentalists, the greenies, take it a step further and say, well, you can't eat meat and all those sort of things that they... That they go into the extreme side of things. Just like Christianity sometimes. We go to the extreme, very fundamental, independent Baptist type people, right over to the extreme liberalists. All right? Um, but we're biblicists. We just have a name, that's all, really. We're independent Baptists, but independent just means independent from the union. It doesn't mean anything, really. Okay? Um, there are different independent Baptists who are way out there, and they say they're the only ones, they're the, they are the bride of Christ, and then there's the ones over here that accept anybody, or well, everybody will go to heaven because they're a good person. Um, so, there's this long continuum. So, clearly then, what is, um, God said, let us, and what's the us? <laughs> the Trinity. So, what is the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay, what does that mean? That means three gods. No, no. Ah. Right. Okay. They are just one God. Okay. You are one person. Right. You are one person. You're not three persons. And yet the Bible talks about that we're made in the image of God, and we'll look at a little later that we are body, soul, and spirit. Okay, so uh, we're made in God's image of his trinity. Let us make man in our image. So that's the plural nature. Okay. Anyway, who did the creating? Just, a, just as a step. Side step. The Lord Jesus Christ. He did all the creating. So he's the one that um, said, said that, or God. God said that, and the Lord Jesus Christ did all the creation, creating. Okay. Um, now, what then is the image? What then is the image of God? Does God look like me? No. 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 Pardon? The elements of a person. Elements of a person. Three, three parts of a person. Okay. Okay, personality traits, because God has personality. He's able to love, he's able to have anger, he's able to do all those things that we're able to do. Yep. And that's not enough because you can argue that creatures can do that. Yes, so yes. Be something else. Correct, because in the fall, in the fall, what did Satan say to Adam, well, to Eve, that if she ate the fruit, she'd be like God? Knowing the difference between good and evil. And then, because she knew the difference between good and evil, then she would be like God. But God had actually created man in his image. So, his image then is 
firstly sinless, because he created Adam and Eve sinless. And of obviously his likeness, his character, his, his being, the way he is, the way he feels, and, and the things that he, he does, um, those sort of things. You know, we can experience jealousy, we can experience anger, we can experience love, and all those things which God can experience. And he's made us, and he's given us that. We're all individuals. We have an individuality, okay? And often, sometimes, our background depends, or, or our, the way we've been brought up depends on how we, we behave um, and, and the things, because we look, we take our examples from our parents and our grandparents and all that sort of thing. And so culture has a, has a, a thing to do with it as well. You know, we, we think that some people um, are different because of their background, their culture, the things they eat. You know, who would eat sushi? Yeah. And yet it's been brought into today's society and people have it for lunch today. Oh, but whoever would have thought that? You know? She's, she's lost. <laughs> um, and, and rice balls and, and things like that. We never used to have any of that. What happened to the, 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 um, the pie and the three veggies, you know? And... and yeah, or, or a, a, a potato pie, you know, or the, what do they call them? Shepherd's pie and things like that. Yeah, what happened to those things? We're all getting this fancy foods, aren't we? We're eating this fancy stuff. Uh, anyway, so we're created in God's uh, image, his, his sinless and his likeness, his character. Okay, man has not evolved... But we are a special creation. So we look at verse 26 here again. And God said, let us make man. It's a special creation. Mind you, are the animals a special creation? Yeah, they're made by God. Yeah, they're made by God. There is no evolution that has taken place. Did the plants evolve or did God just create them? God created everything. Okay, God has created everything. Did the stones evolve? Because I'm thinking before the fall, he had legs. And then after the fall, God took them away. Now, was, was it a snake? Right, uh, or... Yeah, that's right, in Hebrew it says serpent. Yeah, it? yeah. Okay, good job. Ah, but did they evolve? Like he, talked, he spoke to Eve. You see, speaking, she didn't seem to be surprised by this. No, she wasn't surprised. Which means she must have been used to talking to to the animals, like Doctor um, Doolittle. Do yeah. Or is that supposition? <coughs> That's another whole can of worms in itself. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, when when God said, "Don't put him on his belly," just it's just a. Um, a punishment that he received, just like we received a punishment, or the you know we had to work for our living, um, and a woman would have pain and childbearing. That's the punishment that continued on. Now, is that evolution? You know, I don't think so. It's, it's just more, a punishment. It's more of a devolution, isn't it? Like our souls became corrupted, therefore yeah. you know, as we are. In that sense, the serpent became corrupted. Corrupted and from now on should cause. Yes, that's right. So it's a corruption, not an evolution. Yeah, yeah. So that he's lost something and he doesn't speak now. Um, so in verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So he created male and female. So he didn't create. A male, and then because there was no other males, right, then one of the males had to evolve into a female so that we could have <coughs> male and female. Or the two males didn't able to reproduce. It's male and female, okay? Um, so it was a special, special creation, and he created male and female. Male and female of everything. Or even some plants are male and female, aren't they? Isn't the kiwi fruit um, male and female? Don't you have to have two? Bananas are, no? And pajamas are too. 
Yeah. Yeah. So compassion fruit. Yeah. So there's a, quite a few things that are male and female um, plants as well. Okay. Um, but animals, obviously, male and female. So Christ did not die for the animals. I've just made that statement. Romans 1, the whole world's grown for the day of redemption. So Correct. The whole creation is going to be redeemed. Correct. So in that sense, Christ died to redeem. Correct. Yeah. Yes. But he didn't die for them personally. Person. No, no. Okay. he didn't die for them personally. But you're absolutely right. They, like the fall, they fell and suffered death pain, anguish, um, disease, just like man, okay? So the, they fell with us. Because of us, they fell. And because of the redemption of Christ on the cross, they will also inherit that other, the reverse of it, okay? So it's not because Christ died for them, it's because they will enjoy what we have, will inherit. They will come with us. And so that puts us at a, uh, a place in God's eyesight, in his creation, the pinnacle, okay, right at the top. We are very, very special. We are very special uh, to God. Salvation restores that image. So if we go to Ephesians... <coughs> So at the fall, the image was ruined. Okay, We were created in the image of God, a sinless and his character. But that's, that image was broken. It's like looking at yourself in a broken mirror. You know, It's marred. The image is marred. Um, when I look at myself in a mirror, then I see all the defects. In me, okay. So there might be um, some. Uh, no, at the moment, when Rick looks in the mirror, he sees that uh, something has gone wrong. <laughs> He's mad in some way, okay. He's going to get the stitches out next week. That's all right. Um, but when we get saved, the image will be restored. Um, so twenty-four, verse twenty-four says, and. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. So, which is after God created in righteousness. So, we put on a new man. We have become a new uh, creature in Christ. So, God restores that image. So, when we as saved person, and we can only be saved because of what Christ did on the cross, right? It's the only way that the image can be restored, right? There's no other way. It's not through works, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It's not through works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, 5. It's not by our goodness. It's in, um, in Isaiah 64, 6. It's all our righteousness or his filthy rags. So it's, it has to be by Christ. And we are then restored. We restored. Um, that image is restored. When we stand before God, we declared sinless. But not what I've done, what Christ did on the cross for me. Okay? So, to God the Father, I am a sinless person, even though I still commit sin. So, when Christ died on the cross for me, all my sin was forgiven. Past, present, and future. Right? Otherwise, if it was only past and present, then Christ would have to die for me at some other part or point in time. And this is why the Roman Catholics have Christ on the cross continually and have the forgiveness of sins continually because he might have died and paid the penalty for sin once, but you need to be forgiven over and over again. Okay? So 
um, we need to be aware that we are sinless and appear sinless before God the Father. Okay? So, um, in Christ, we our image is restored. Um, Colossians chapter 3. And verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So the image, God's image in which man was created right at the beginning, was marred because of the fall. In other words, we became sin. Okay, we were sinners. And uh, because God the Father, His image is sinless, we were sinners. So that image was marred. And now we put on the new man. We are a new creation. Basically recreated in His image because of what Christ did on the cross. There is no other way that we can receive or be recreated apart from God. Okay? So if we go back to Genesis one twenty six. Yep. It says we're made in the image of God. Yes. We now know that the image of God, which was damaged in the fall, yes. was righteousness, true holiness, and knowledge. Correct. Hmm. Yep. So, going back to that, the, the Garden of Eden then, they were created in the image of God for how long? Until the fall. Okay, until the fall. But are we not created in the image after the fall? But it's a marred image. Okay? It's a marred image which needs to be restored. Okay? So God recreates, right, that image. And now, as you see in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10, um, we're renewed in knowledge. Um, and, which is after the image of him that created him. We, we have then this knowledge of worshipping God, studying his word, doing all the righteous things, knowing what's right and what's wrong, yes, but we are obedient to what God has said. Okay? Did Adam know what was right, and, or did Eve know what was right and wrong about eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil they, they, he did they did they chose to, to um, sin against God ok <clears throat> go back to Genesis chapter 2 <clears throat> so remember where we're going with this we're going to examine soul sleep, right? Or annihilation. Um, and we're starting off looking at man itself, the creation. Right? How important is it for us? Or how important um, does God see man um, in his, as he created us in his image? Verse 7. And the Lord... God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay, so I'll just let you think about that for a moment. God created man from the dust of the earth and he breathed in him Life. Man became a living soul. So, what you see in yourself and every other human being is a living soul. Right? So, when you see me stand here, I'm a living soul. I have life. I'm alive. I'm a living soul. Okay, so the soul is what? Life, right? Every, everything, you're right. So when I'm looking in the mirror or when I'm doing things, I'm just using this body. 
I'm inside this body. Okay? So because God created the body out of the earth. And when someone dies, what do they normally say at the graveside? Dust to dust. I don't know, well, the Bible doesn't say ashes to ashes. But we just sort of... No. <laughs> but dust to dust. You're going to return back to the dust. All right? Yeah, yeah. Some people are eternal smokers. Yeah. Um, so we see that clearly in verse 7, here is this form, the body form, the body form, right? This is the flesh and the blood, if you like, but it has no life until God gives it life. And also God breathed into, and man became a living soul. Right? So that this, the soul is something which is set apart from the body. So that the soul is not the body. It's part of, part of who you are. But it's separate. Okay? Also we see here in verse 7 that it's not an evolution thing either. Because God created a formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay? So, if man's body had been derived from animal's body by any kind of evolutionary process, man would have already possessed nephesh rather than God giving man a living soul. <coughs> Okay. Hang on, hang on. Yep. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Um, when it says that God created living creatures, yes. the word for living is also in the Yes, and as you say here, nephesh is a biblical oh. Hebrew word. The word refers to aspects of the capacity to feel, to perceive, and to experience. Mm. And animals can do that too. They can perceive, fear, anger. You know, that's why dogs growl. Uh, cats hiss and, and all those sort of things. Um, they also have those things. They can feel pain. Um, you know, they, ow, 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 you know, it's not strictly true when people say animals don't have a soul. If you be because we and animals both have an fish, so we both have soul. But, but yes, yeah, there is. That, that's it. That is. Yeah. There's, there's something. We are the pinnacle of God's creation. And God died for man and not for the animals. The animals did not fall. We fell. We needed salvation. The animals came with, with us. So this, Going back to what you said before. Yeah. Right? We and the animals are both soulish. Yes. But only we are created after the image of God. Yes. In righteousness, holiness, yes. and knowledge. And there are some things which animals can't do that we do. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, you, you, we've all got pets. We know what pets do and, and how they uh, behave and things like that. Um, so um, animals to human beings and other animals are both described as having nefesh. So exactly what you see. You know, that's, hang on, hang on. But you actually didn't quite wait for no. my next yeah, slide. You see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to Yeah. Um, so, the unbeliever has physical life only, but not spiritual life. Um, so when, and we've looked at this before about the salvation of uh, a children, um, and, and what, at what age that is, and, and the age of understanding, and all those sort of things. We've looked at those issues um, previously. Um, but a person... Um, is not, when they're not saved, they do not have spiritual life. Their image is still marred, isn't it? God, there's no new creation. God hasn't recreated that image into that sinless image that he is. Um, so Ephesians 2.1, we'll need to finish on that. And we'll pick it up again. Next week. Uh. 
And you hath he quickened, or, what's another word for quickened? Made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin and sins. So the wages of sin is death. Okay? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so God has quickened you or made you alive. And so even though a person is alive, they're spiritually dead. The image is marred. And just like a mad pot or a cracked pot, as a potter makes this pot and it's, puts it into the, the oven and it cracks, what does he do with it? Throws it out. It's no good for anything. It's no good for anything. Or it's like a, a baker who makes biscuits and, and burns them. What do you, what's, what do, you do with them? Um, you know, the Belgian biscuits that Nana used to make, what does she do with them? Throw them under the hedge. They were dead, you could, you couldn't eat them. Um, the shops, they sell seconds biscuits, you know, cracked biscuits and pieces of biscuits and all those sort of things. At, uh, was it $2 a bag or something like that? At, um, at um, what? Baker Boys, that's right, Baker Boys. Um, things like that. So, we are dead before we're saved. The image, the sinless image, is Mad is mad. Um, Romans six twenty three. The wage of sin is death. First uh, John five twelve. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Okay? So, you might be alive, but you're, to God you're dead. And what do you do with things? Rubbish? Burn it. Throw it out. Burn it. What happens to the soul who rejects Christ, who is dead? Throws it out burns it. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll pick up a little bit more on that because remember where we're going with it. We're going to, to soul sleep. Is soul sleep or annihilation? Or is it something else? Okay, we'll look at that in, in the next few weeks. Hopefully, I think this yeah, that's, that's right there. We're going to look at the three bits of man. So let's close the word of prayer. And then we'll pick it up again next week.